What's up, everybody? Welcome back into another episode of Tide Talk Live. Stacey Blackwood joined, as always, by Jake Thomas here for our Mississippi State preview show. Jake, what's happening, brother? Man, I'm excited. Uh, as you know, I have said it several times on on uh, the podcast. We're actually going to this game today, so I'll you know we're recording this morning. I'll be heading down right soon, right after this. So uh, if y'all see me down there, you know, stop by, say hi, and uh, tell us if you you know what you like about the show. You know, well, glad to hear your comments and thoughts about it. Yeah, no doubt. And speaking of your thoughts and comments, uh, jump in the comment section right now mm-hmm. here on YouTube and. And uh, give us your score prediction for the Alabama Mississippi State game. Uh, excited about the contest. Uh, dog. Jake's dog is also excited <laughs> mm-hmm. about the contest yeah. tonight as Alabama looks to regroup uh, and get back in the win column after the disappointing loss last week to Tennessee. If you're not already, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, and make sure you leave this video a thumbs up. And uh, you can also find us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Music, just wherever you find great podcasts, you can find Todd Talk Live. All right, Jake, let's just let's just go ahead and just dive right into it. Of course, Alabama's coming off the disappointing loss last weekend to Tennessee uh, with the last second field goal, 52 to 49. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jake, as we as we move ahead to Mississippi State, it's a little bit different challenge. Obviously, they throw the ball a lot, but it's a different type of passing game. Tennessee is a real vertical threat. Mi- Mississippi State really tries to to nickel and dime you down the field. Uh, just as as the matchup is just a few hours away, what are your thoughts uh, here on, on, on Alabama's matchup with Mississippi State? I'm excited, not just because I'm going down there, but, you know, this is an opportunity to, like you said, regroup, get some things figured out, and and, uh, and I kind of hope to see some of that tonight. Um, I said, you know, I do another podcast, uh, SEC After Dark, and I said on Wednesday night, there's, there's two things I want to see happen in this game. You know, I want to see Alabama minimize the the uh, the penalties. You know, that's that's first and foremost. That's got to get cleaned up. That that is uncharacteristic for any kind of Nick Saban led Alabama team. Uh, and the other thing is, you know, maybe it if that if it's that big of an issue, maybe simplify the defense a little bit. You know, if I don't know, maybe it's scheming whatever, but it just seems like. There's too many, you know, finger point when somebody goes in motion, you know, that's your guy, that's your guy, that's your guy. And then somewhere within all that just gets somebody just missing an assignment. So maybe simplify the defense, uh, you know, wh- whatever it needs to work out. But I'd like to see that second day get back on track tonight. Um, honestly, I would love to see a couple picks, you know, from that secondary. That would be great just to give them some kind of momentum and some kind of, you know, but you know, trying to lift them up a little bit because they're they're kind of down right now. It seems like because they, you know, Hendon Hooker is a great quarterback and and uh, and Hot, you know, absolutely played an outstanding game last week. But uh, there's a few things that, that I like to see. But overall, in the matchup, I think Alabama just too talented offensively. They're not going to stop us. They're not going to stop Bryce. So I, I think overall, uh, we get some things figured out on defense and uh, we win and win big. Yeah, you know, I like your assessment, but one thing, just real quick on, on last week's game, Jake, anytime Jalen Hyatt is matched up on DeMarco Helms, as yeah. good a player as DeMarco Helms is, mm-hmm. that is a losing battle. It is, yeah. It's not fair to DeMarco Helms to, to be matched up with Jalen Hyatt one-on-one. It's just not. Mm-hmm. That's coaching. Yeah. That's that's poor design and poor game planning defensively. But but moving ahead to this game, Jake, I, I, I'm with you. I think Alabama has too much firepower on offense. Uh, you notice that that Mississippi State uh, <laughs> Mississippi State uh, obviously has a great passing attack with the air raid with Will Rogers and, and Mike Leach does a really good job of calling the plays there uh, yeah. in Starkville. But uh, you know, in his two years there, Jake, he's been he's been outscored ninety to nine. That's wild against yeah. Alabama. So uh, yeah. just nine points in two seasons against Alabama. I'm sure it'll be a little bit more than that tonight because they do have the experience on offense with Will Rogers making his, you know, this is his, really his third year of playing there uh, in, at Mississippi State. So he's a really good player over already over 2,300 yards passing and 24 touchdowns. So he's a talented guy. They have some, some weapons on the outside. Ra Ra Thomas is a really good wide out. Uh, their backs seem to be, you know, capable. They have, they have some solid backs who are, you know, kind of two guys by committee that have that have really done a good job for their offense. But, but they're going to have to score in the high thirties to win this game, Jack. And I just don't see this Alabama defense after surrendering fifty-two points last yeah. week to Tennessee, 
given up much more than you know maybe 24 in this in in this matchup with Mississippi State and maybe not even that much because you know what happens after Alabama takes takes an L. It happened last year before Alabama played Mississippi State when they lost to Texas A and M, and they went to Stockville and beat uh, beat Mississippi State forty nine to nine. Right. Yeah. It, it was it was not close, and yep. Alabama really owned that game from start to finish. I think Will Anderson had three sacks or four sacks in the contest. It really propelled him and catapulted him to finish the season on a, on a high note. And uh, you know, after the way he performed last week, uh, I, I'm sure that that he is ready to, to feast on a quarterback and, and on a running game. So I'm excited to see how the team responds, Jake. The penalties are outrageous. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you notice uh, 17 – Alabama has 66 penalties on the season. Uh, yeah. And 30 of those have come in two road games. Yeah. 30 yeah, of them. I, I saw that. So it, it's just – look, does Alabama have uh, some discipline problems? Uh, especially the pre-snap penalties are discipline problems. Right. Jake – but but penalties are not all the same. Mm-hmm. Just because you have penalties doesn't mean you lack discipline. Right. Yep. Uh, pass interference calls are 90% because the referee doesn't let the defender touch the offensive player at all. That's I not a lack of discipline. That's mm-hmm. just a guy trying to make a play. Right. So I, the, the lack of discipline is a little bit overstated. A lot of teams get false starts on the road, Jake. It just happens. Alabama has a few more than what they should. But, Jake, the, the the pass interferences on defense are just outrageous. Alabama gets called for them probably more than anybody else in the country. Yeah. Uh, and I doubt we're the only defensive backs in the country who who put hands on, on the opposing receivers. I, I doubt it. I highly doubt it. I don't know. Yeah. I haven't watched every game uh, of every, uh, every play of every season uh, for every other team. But I, I'm just saying that it's – that Alabama's called a little bit differently. And, oh, Coach yeah. Sa- and Coach Saban even pointed to that a little bit. He without, you know, naming specific plays or you know really calling out the officials, he by by saying he wished pass interference would call more consistently and call both ways. He's saying, yeah, we're called for more than anybody else, and something has to be done about that. Yeah, that that uh, was his yeah. that was his diplomatic way of saying that. And yeah. And and that's the truth. The one on Malachi Moore there that when it, when it would have settled the game against Tennessee was was a horrendous call. And, and I don't want to I don't really want to relive that because you know Tennessee played a great game. Jay Kendon Hooker was phenomenal. Jalen Hyatt was phenomenal. Tennessee's offensive line did a great job throughout the entire contest. Uh, and and you know we, we missed the kick and they make theirs at the end and they win the ball game. But mm-hmm. but. Uh, it's also doing a disservice to, to the players on the field to not bring to light some of the the horrendous calls that were made in that game. Jake, Absolutely. 17 penalties in a game is outrageous. It is. That's a school it's record. Out, it's outrageous. <laughs> yeah. And it's and I ridiculous. and I'll be the first to tell you, yeah, a lot of them were penalties, but a lot weren't. Yeah, I agree hundred percent. So uh, but but anyways, on to Mississippi State. I didn't mean to go off on that little tangent, but you know Mississippi State. They're, they're one of those teams that you know they kind of who they kind of are who they are, Jake. And and under Mike Leach, they're going to be you know a seven and five and eight and four team. Right now, they sit at five and two. They've got a couple nice wins on the season. They beat Texas A and M. Uh, so the, they're a solid team, Jake. But they like you said it. They don't have the horses to keep up with Alabama, especially a, for lack of a better term, pissed off Alabama team. Ooh, yeah. And and, and it, of all the things I want to watch out for in this game is is I want to see this team play nasty, not dirty, but nasty. Mm-hmm. And and you, anybody who knows Alabama football or football in general knows what I mean by playing nasty. Play with an edge. Play with an attitude. Play within yourself, though. Mm-hmm. You know, the, the thing about especially young players, you don't have to make the special play every time you touch the ball right. or every time you're in the game. Just make the play for the play that was called. That's all you have to do. So just do your job, play with play with an edge, play to that Bama standard. Mm-hmm. And, th- and that goes for everybody. I know the offense has put up a lot of n- – a lot of great numbers, especially last week. Bryce Young, in a losing effort, was as good as a quarterback. I mean, he played as good a game as I've ever seen a quarterback play. He's special for sure. He is. Bryce Young is – special is not even 
I know. The, cor- the correct word. I, I don't know. I don't know a proper adjective. I don't he either. Is, he is unbelievable. He and is. and uh, Jameer Gibbs, unbelievable. Mm-hmm. Uh, and what, what what needs to happen is Alabama needs to find that go-to guy at wide receiver. Now this whole Jermaine Burton thing has happened, Jake. I don't mm-hmm. know what he was thinking. Look, there two things can be true at one time. The fans don't need to be on the field, and Jermaine Burton don't need to be an idiot. Right. Yeah, both of them are correct. Both of those are true, and I'm just going to leave it at that. Whatever Mm -hmm. Saban and the coaching staff decides to do, I'm sure it'll be fit. But that's just a knucklehead move, as Charles Barkley would say, and you can't do that. Uh, You you cannot do that. You can't let the emotions of the moment get to you and and swing at somebody, and especially a woman. Right. So just a bonehead move by by Jermaine Burton. But Mm – Speaking of that wide receiver room, Jake, there's a lot of buzz about Tyler Harrell this week. Yeah. He, he's he's finally getting back healthy for Alabama. And the fact that Coach Saban mentioned that he's to the point where he can maybe, you know, help the team or, you know, uh, get into the game, that that's big time for Alabama. Alabama has not had a vertical threat this season, really. I know Isaiah Bonds made a couple big plays. Kobe Prentice has made a couple big plays. But the consistent down-the-field threat, has not been there for Alabama. Mm-hmm. And Tyler Harrell, that's really what he was brought in for from Louisville, Jake, was to be that home run guy uh, to, to blow past to the defenders and let Bryce Young hit him in stride and, and take it to the house. And if, if Harrell is healthy and if he is comfortable in the offense, if he has chemistry with Bryce Young, uh, this Alabama offense might be taking that next step. And we might see that start to unfold this week again against Mississippi State. Absolutely. I, I just got two more points I was going to make. Uh, one, I was speaking about the wide receivers. You know, you did talk about getting Harrell back potentially. Uh, but it looks like Kobe Prentice and, you know, is becoming Bryce Young's favorite target right now. I mean, he uh, – on that uh, on that throwaway, it seemed like Bryce just threw it up. And, I, I mean, I really thought it was going out of bounds. And Kobe Prentice had nowhere catches it. And I was like, man, my gosh, you know, good, good read on – by him on that ball. And then, of course, you said Isaiah Bond as well. He's starting to get a rhythm with him. But but let's not forget DeCorey Brooks. He, he's looking like he's finally coming alive as well. And uh, it was kind of odd not to see him, you know, the first couple of weeks, like, starting because he was, you know, pretty much the only guy that back that had any kind of experience with Bryce Young. But it looks like he's finding his groove now as well. Uh, and the other thing is, real quick, it looks like we're fixing to get a big time defensive lineman back. It looks like uh, it Borgby looks like he may be uh, coming back here within maybe today, but it might be next week or, or the week after after the after the bye week. But just getting him back on the inside because he was having a great season. You know his stats may not be there, but he's just been disruptive, and that's what you you want your defensive lineman to be is disruptive uh, to let those linebackers make, make a play and, and all that. So getting him back is going to be big for this Bama defensive line as well. Yeah, I think I think that might be the most underappreciated injury of mm-hmm. the season right now, it's, especially you know here in, in Alabama. Jake Justin Aboyd be the first was it four, he played the first four games right. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. was like you said the word disruptive he was yes he was making plays and helping others make plays because of how disruptive he was and uh he was well on his way to working himself into a really really good draft position yep. and hopefully now that the injury he, you know he's he's getting better and thankfully it's nothing serious anytime right. a player has a neck injury you're worried about their career and yes. uh, and now that he looks like he's going to be able to come back, I I think they're probably going to let him sit tonight, yeah. sit the bye week, and then come back uh, for LSU and, and be ready to play then. Uh, but uh, I'll be glad when a boy B gets back in the lineup. But I have to give props to DJ Dell. DJ Dell has yes. played really well the last couple of weeks. Mm-hmm. Uh, he got a sack last week against Tennessee. Uh, he was really a, a force there in the middle. Maybe not as consistent as what a boy B uh, was. But but he was still making some plays there uh, for the album of defensive line and and getting a boy be back will be huge for, for this album of defense moving forward. Uh, and now when when you look at Alabama defensively, Jake, uh, I, I know a much is going to be made about the performance of the secondary last week and uh, you know and look we can talk about was it a poor game plan was it poor uh, leverage by the defensive back was it poor communication uh, was it poor adjustment. Whatever the case is, Jake, that game is history. 
Right. And and your your season starts again tonight against Mississippi State. Mm -hmm. And so what happened last week against Tennessee does not matter now. Now it's right. about regrouping and refocusing and doing your job the right way. And that that's that goes down to the players, that goes down to the coaches. So it's about coming up with a good game plan, then executing that game plan and making the necessary adjustments. And and I want to see that defensively from Alabama. Look, I think they're going to play with the edge. Will Anderson is is going to be an animal. Whether he puts up crazy stats is is one thing or not, because Mississippi State does like to get rid of the ball pretty quick. But it, the defense has to play with an edge, and has to play with within themselves, and 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 not give up explosive plays. Jake, I mean, they had they gave up three touchdowns of what thirty or forty or fifty plus yards or something yeah. last week, the most of the saving era. That just can't happen. It cannot right. happen. Right. I agree. And, and like you said, you know, you've got to play within yourself and, um, you know, and, and again, like you said as well, this, this is a new season. It, it starts tonight and we, we still control our own destiny. We went out, we're going to the SEC championship game. Exactly. Uh, so, I mean, just, just play ball and, you know, any, whatever happens on the field happens, you know, yep. it's still in your hands. To, to win out, get in the SEC championship game, and then get back into the college football playoff. Yeah, no, no doubt. And, and that's that's really what it is. Like you said, everything that Alabama wants to accomplish is out in front of them still. Right. Uh, all they got to do is take care of business. And, and, Jake, we've seen them do this over and over again. Yesterday, David Pollack, who is a well-respected analyst for ESPN, made the most outrageous statement ever because he doesn't un he doesn't pay attention. Right. <laughs> he was lazy in his in his statement, Jake. He said that uh, Alabama's reign of dominance is over. We're going to have to get accustomed to seeing them lose a game every year. Jake, they lose games. They lose a game every year just about. They've right. had two undefeated seasons under Coach Saban. What is he talking there, what, about? 15 years. <laughs> what is David Pollock talking about? Uh, I, all, the whole national media has gone insane Jake, over it, this. It's a, it is a prime example of lazy analysis. Right. Yep, it is. That's all it is. It's lazy analysis. Yeah. And knee-jerk reaction. Oh, Alabama right. lost the game. The end is near. Right. I mean, how many times have we heard that? Um, all the time. I mean, outside of 2020, the season, that was a special team, and and it was battle hard because it played an all-SEC schedule. Other than that, I mean, like you said, there's been three other times – we yeah. have won three national championships, three or four national championships with one losses. Yeah. You know. Well, and let me say yeah. this. Everybody's like, well, an album is no longer dominant. Okay. We all agree that 2020 mm -hmm. Alabama is one of, if not the greatest team in college football history. Absolutely. Do y'all remember what happened in Oxford, Mississippi that year? Oh, my gosh. It was like a 66 to 63 game or something like that. It was okay. back and forth. That, that, that's my point. People forget right. all that, Jake. They they, yeah. they they lose sight of the facts because mm -hmm. they have hopes and dreams that the Alabama dynasty is going to be over. Right. Instead of using facts. Yeah, and not to mention the SEC championship game that year. I, I, I know. Yeah. It, it, see, it, pe yeah. people lose sight of all that because mm -hmm. they, they, they live in this bubble where they probably don't watch every album a game, which is understandable. If you're not an right. album a fan, I understand not watching every play of every game. Mm -hmm. But Jake, like we talked about last week, album's win margin is the same right now as it's been pretty much the entire Saban era. The dominance has not changed, Jake. Right. Now, I will say, I think other programs – are catching up because of what NIL has done, what the transfer portal has done. So mm -hmm. I think there's a few more teams that are, you know, closing the gap, but album is not losing anything. Other right. teams are just gaining a little more. Right. But you know who still sits atop the recruiting rankings? Alabama. Alabama. You know who <laughs> has the best quarterback in the country? Alabama. <laughs> you know who has m maybe the most explosive and most elusive playmaker in the country right now? <laughs> Alabama. <laughs> you know who has the most feared defensive player in the country right now? Alabama. <laughs> you know who has the best coach in the, in the history of college football on the sidelines right now? Alabama. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to I'm going to put my money that I was going to figure it out. Right. We always so do. Everybody in the national media and other fan bases can live on hopes and dreams that the Alabama dynasty is dead. But mm -hmm. until yeah. I see it, Dead, buried, and gone, as Nick Saban said famously a few years ago. Yeah. 
I'm I, my, my my money's going on Nick Saban and the Tide. Absolutely. I mean, he's had what? He's been there what? How many years now? This 15 or 16 it, years. Yeah. Okay. And he's only lost like 24 or 26 games, something like that, in that right. reign. Right. How many other fan bases love to have that going on right now? Nice. To have a coach there 15 years and only lose 26 games, 24, 26 yeah. games. Well, you know, the, the national media lives on hopes and dreams when, yeah. when they when they when they look at this Alabama football program. We look at the facts, Jake. Are we fans yeah. of Alabama? Of course we are. Right. But you know what? I'm realistic. And I can't I don't want to say I can't can't wait, but I'm looking forward to the day when Nick Saban is gone from Alabama and Alabama isn't where they are right now and where they've just mm -hmm. dominated for so long for the last decade mm -hmm. and a half, and they're back to a normal level of of, of you know competitiveness in the around the country so people can see how non-biased i am jake right it's not being biased to make the smart bet and and think and believe that nick saban and alabama are going to figure it out that's what being smart is that's yeah. using facts from the past to put together what you need to put together to to forecast what's going to happen in the future jake right that's being smart mm-hmm Living off hopes and dreams that the dynasty is dead is not smart, Jake, and it's not using no. facts. Nope. It's like I've said, Jake, it's other fan bases and it's the national media doing a lot of wishful thinking. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, like you said, so, I'm gonna put my I'm gonna put my money on on Nick Saban, Alabama, because he's done it time and time and time and time and time again. You remember remember when I <laughs> lost to Ole Miss in twenty fifteen? And everybody, uh, everybody said the album was, you know, they're done for. The dynasty's over. You know, hang it up, <laughs> Coach Saban. Uh, Alabama has a Nick Saban problem. That was even a headline. Yeah. Uh, uh, remind me, Jake, what, what happened that year at the end of the year? <laughs> won a championship. Yeah, and Derrick Henry won the Heisman Trophy. <laughs> and won the Heisman Trophy, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Good I mean, you think people would learn, Jake. No. Uh, apparently they don't. No. Because it's, it's up here ever. And what, what is unbelievable, Jake, is we have to have this discussion every week because yeah. every week people just think it's over. I, I right. just, and look, one day they're obviously going to be right. I mean, obviously one day that will come true. But until they start using facts to, to base that opinion off of, I don't want to hear from them. No. No. Nope. I don't, I don't want to hear their wishful thinking. I want to hear what they think based off the facts of what we know. And mm -hmm. what we know is that Nick Saban ain't slowing down. Nope. The recruiting's not slowing down. Nope. They have the best quarterback in the country. They have one of the best running backs in the country. They have one of those feared defenders in the country. Mm -hmm. So be smart, people. Be yeah. smart. Don't, don't fall into the trap that the national media tries to set everybody up in that it's over with right based off what because they lost a regular season game oh like they did in 2011 2012 2015 <laughs> yep uh, uh 2017 yep uh they, they lost they lost the regular season game last year what they do make the national championship game and lose to a team that they had actually beaten in the SEC championship game right yeah. I mean, what what other th – that's the facts, people. And probably one of the youngest teams Saban's had in, in a national championship. <laughs> yeah. And Saban. on top of that, they lose <laughs> they lose their, their top two playmakers on offense. Right. And and arguably their two best corners. I mean, their two yeah, best and, corners. And their you know. two starting corners are out. So, <laughs> just good grief, people. Yeah. Uh, look, I, I'm not mad at anybody on a national level – for wanting the album of Dynasty to be over with. I understand that. I get it. Yep. I'd be sick of it if I wasn't an Alabama fan. Yep. But you can't let that cloud your judgment of reality. You nope. can't. Nope. Anyways, <laughs> I think we can give our score predictions for tonight now and we can wrap this thing up if you're ready, Jake. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, I think it's going to be, you know, Alabama gets back on track. Uh, they probably, you know, we, we mentioned Will Rogers. I, I know Mike Leach hasn't give hasn't scored a touchdown against Alabama yet. That may change the night, but I think it's going to be like a forty-five to thirteen type game. I think Alabama gets back on track. They're they're uh, 
21 point favorite. So I think they do cover the spread. So I'm, I'm looking like 45, 13, you know, something like that. Yeah, I, I'm with you. I think Alabama is, is due a game, not due a game, but I think Alabama is going to give a game where they, they kind of flex their muscle a little bit. Uh, mm-hmm. I think I'm with you. Alabama's not going to shut out Mike Leach's offense for a third straight season. I mean, I say shut out, not allow a touchdown for a third straight season. That's just mm-hmm. that's nearly impossible against right. anybody. Yeah, and, and the fact that they've done that two years in a row is just incredible. But it is incredible. Um, but uh, you know, Will Rogers is an experienced guy. Mike Leach is is a great football coach, and I think they probably score a couple touchdowns. Uh, but I'm with you, Jake. I think I'm going to win this game around 45 to 13, 45 17. They cover that 21 point spread. They flex their muscles a little bit on both sides of the ball. Uh, maybe we see a little bit uh, a newer playmaker emerge for this album offense, whether that's Tyler Harrell or maybe one of those young receivers just continue to develop, like Isaiah Bond or Kobe Prentice. But right. uh, something new happens on offense. Maybe JoJo Earl gets in the action more. Uh, that he is sitting now that he's healthy, but defensively, this is this is a statement game for Alabama. After giving up 52 points, you have to come out and make a statement. Yeah, and absolutely. and and keeping miss if you keep Mississippi State under 20 points, I think you've played a heck of a football game. Yep, I agree 100. So. percent All right. Well, I did not mean <laughs> to go on the 10 minute tirade on the national media, but uh, I can't help it. I got one more thing I want to say, and and if anybody's watching this, and you're not going to be at the game tonight, so Stacy, I know you probably you'll be watching, but somebody send me a text and let me know what Mike Leach says pregame if they interview him because you know we've already had to in this year, we've yeah. Had, uh, the the thing about coffee, so I mean, I mean, I like Mike Leach, but you don't know what you're going to get in an interview with him at all. So I just got to know about that. <laughs> it, Mike Leach is one of the most likable coaches he ever. Is. He is. I mean, I know he got in trouble for that, but his fat little girlfriend's thing was the funniest <laughs> coach coach yeah. speech I've ever heard in my life. It was. That was so great. Man, that, uh, he, but, he's he's talked he's talked about Halloween candy. Yeah, like you said, eloping, <laughs> uh, coffee. coffee. I mean, you know, if he, yeah. he's 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 all over the the pop c- culture scene right now. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, well I'll, I'll shoot you a text of what what Mike Leach has to say pregame. But uh, looking yeah. forward to tonight's matchup, Jake. Yeah, I hope you and Cassidy absolutely. have a great time there. Oh, Obviously, yeah. safe Appreciate travels it. down there and back home. Uh, just mm-hmm. a short trip for us. We're just a couple hours away from Tuscaloosa, so. Uh, not too bad of a trip for Jake and Casty, but they're enjoying their uh, eight-year anniversary. So excited mm-hmm. for them! Happy anniversary to you guys! And Thank uh, you, sir. But that's that's going to wrap up this episode. Thanks everybody for watching. Didn't mean to go for thirty minutes, but it is what it is. But thank you for watching. Drop your score predictions in the comment section right now, and make sure you hit that like button and that subscribe button so you don't miss a single episode of Tide Talk Live. But for Stacy Blackwood and Jake Thomas, thank you for watching. Until next time, roll Tide. Road Tide.